Welcome to Let's Talk Philosophy. My name is Brett, and today we're going to talk about five valuable lessons from Marcus Aurelius' Meditations. The meditations are a collection of self-reflections made up of various monologues, epigrams, and moral maxims. It's unclear whether he intended this book to be passed along. However, it's my opinion that these self-reflections were meant to aid him in his endeavor to maintain a virtuous and decorous lifestyle. Nonetheless, there are multitudes of valuable lessons that can prove beneficial in your lives. Make sure you stick around to the end for an additional lesson. The first lesson is to be grateful for the people in your life who have given you guidance and direction. The entirety of Book 1 is devoted to this very thing. Throughout it, he expressed his veneration for teachers and role models, including Antoninus Pius, who was the previous emperor and his adoptive father. He is quoted saying this about him. In my adoptive father, I observed mildness of temper and unchangeable resolution in the things that he had determined after due deliberation, and no vainglory in those things that men call honor, and a love of labor and perseverance, and a readiness to listen to those who had anything to propose for the common weal, and undeviating firmness in giving to every man according to his deserts, and a knowledge derived from experience of the occasions for vigorous action and remission. What this teaches us is to recognize what we have and who we have. To be grateful not just for the material things we are given, but the immaterial. For these things carry with them the most value. Too many sit around focusing on what life has withheld or taken away from them. Think rationally when focusing on these things. Ask yourself, will this improve my condition or only fitter me more? Since reading this book, I keep a gratuity journal. This reminds me that there is so much in my life to be grateful for, and in almost any situation, you can find something that has benefited you, even if it was a difficult lesson to experience. Lesson 2. Value your time above all other possessions. For what of it you have left, you are not guaranteed, and what of it has passed, cannot be regained. This quote by Marcus Aurelius demonstrates the truly ephemeral nature of time. He said we ought to consider not only that our life is daily wasting away and a smaller part of it is left, but also that if a man should live longer, it is quite uncertain whether the understanding will still continue sufficient for the comprehension of things and retain the power of contemplation that strives to acquire the knowledge of the divine and the human. What I believe he means to convey is this, that most people assume they have plenty of time, but very few assume their time may already be on its downward slope. If there is something that you want to achieve, make haste, for there is no time like the present. Marcus said, the present is the only thing of which a man can be deprived, if it is true that this is the only thing which he has. On one of my previous videos, I went over the importance of appreciating what you already have over that which you want. Apply this to your time as well, because the present is all we truly have. Seneca was correct when he said, a major portion of death has already passed. How much worth do you put on each day? Lesson 3. Focus on self-awareness, not on your awareness of others. It's no secret that many people spend their lives trying to impress those around them, whether this be with ostentatious displays of wealth and power, or deeds done for the sole purpose of gaining recognition and fame. These same people spend countless hours in envy of other people's possessions, not accounting for what they already have. Marcus Aurelius believed that if you focus on external things, you will be deprived of inner peace. Consider this quote on the irrelevance of fame. The desire of the thing called fame torments you. See how soon everything is forgotten and look at the chaos of infinite time on each side of the present and the emptiness of applause and the fickleness and lack of judgment in those who pretend to give praise and the narrowness of its domain and be quiet at last. For the whole earth is a point, and how small a nook in it is your dwelling, and how few are there in it, and what kind of people are they who will praise thee? On the opposite side of this quixotic image of eternal fame is tranquility, and the path to it is through contentment with your portion in a simple life. I think it's safe to say that throughout our lives we should continually reflect on what we are doing and to what end. And if we deem that what we are doing is unjust and against virtue, then we should make haste to correct it. Lesson 4. When someone has wronged you, seek understanding, not vengeance. 
Personally, this one is perhaps the most difficult and will for me take continuous reflection to become proficient. This quote personifies Marcus Aurelius' view on this subject. He said, it is peculiar to a man to love even those who do wrong. And this happens, if when they do wrong it occurs to you that they are fellow humans, and that they do wrong through ignorance and unintentionally, and that soon both of you will die, and above all, that the wrongdoer has done you no harm, for he has not made your ruling faculty worse than it was before. Now, by ruling faculty, he means your ability to choose. To choose justice over vengeance, good over evil, benevolence over spite, and virtue over vice. Depending on the severity of the deed, this can be incredibly difficult. But in order to achieve this level of understanding and forgiveness, you first have to figure out what justice, temperance, and virtuous mean to you. And these are no easy questions to answer. Lesson 5. Even if everyone around you thinks it right to be nefarious in thought and in act, don't give in to the hysteria. Be good. In his meditations, Marcus Aurelius said, Whatever anyone does or says, I must be good. Just as if the emerald were always saying, Whatever anyone does or says, I must be emerald and keep my color. How often have you come across evil that has since passed, where the evil deeds of a few caused this hysteria, where the ignorant joined in like wildebeest that stampede because one gets startled? Closely analyze and question the claims of those around you. And don't be fooled by the bombastic reports from untrusted sources. Of the many things we can learn from history, one important thing is that just because the masses are in agreement doesn't mean what they say has any backing. It is within your power to choose, and it is your duty to leave another man's wrongful act there where it is. Since you made it to the end, here's the bonus lesson that I promised. Lesson 6. It is always in your power to live happily and contentedly. Marcus really said, always bear this in mind, that very little indeed is necessary for living a happy life. True happiness doesn't come from fame, lofty possessions, or any other external thing for that matter, but from the constant pursuit of knowledge and virtue, for the sake of your fellow animals. Whenever you're in question of your actions, try asking yourself, what would Marcus Aurelius think and do about the situation? Thanks for watching to the end, and if you haven't already read the meditations, I hope you decide to pick it up. The link down below is to the version that I read. Thanks again for talking philosophy with me. Make sure you subscribe if you want to talk more. Until next time.